Democrats have now said that they are willing to block the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, if it includes language that the Pentagon's illegal abortion travel reimbursement policy uh, is, is not dealt with. And this is, uh, even policies like that coming from Texas Congressman Ronnie Jackson. And by the way, uh, not only would the Jackson Amendment force the Pentagon to follow the law, which is kind of like what they're supposed to be doing anyways, the Jackson Amendment would not only force the Pentagon to follow the law, but it, it would also allow Senator Tommy Tuberville to end his hold on military promotions. Of course, we know the Democrats are committed to abortion. But the question is, how far will they go in their defense of abortion? Well, joining me now to discuss this and more is Congressman Matt Rosendale. He serves on the House Committee on Veterans Affairs. He's also a member of the House Freedom Caucus. He is coming our way from the great state of Montana and the second congressional district of Montana. Congressman Rosendale, welcome back to Washington Watch. Great to see you. Thanks for having me on, Jody. Live from the ranch today, Glendog, Montana. Well, where the deer and the antelope roam, straight from Montana. Great, to, literally. Great to have you. Yes, I know. Literally, I love your, I love your beautiful state. All right, Congressman, let's get into this. After the Dobbs decision, the Biden administration adopted an illegal abortion travel policy. And of course, we've been dealing with that, battling that for a long time. But now Democrat Adam Smith, who is the ranking member of the Armed Services uh, Committee, he says that, OK, we just won't have an NDAA. We won't have a military budget if it includes any language that changes the Democrats' policy. Uh, so give me your reaction to this. It's it's. It's just crazy, uh, Jody. Um, you know, to to what extent will the Democrats go so that they can not just make sure abortions are performed, okay? This is a step further. Everybody needs to understand that this is making sure that abortions are performed and that taxpayers' dollars, whether they support it or not, are forced to be used to provide the abortions, the travel, the counseling, everything. This is where the big problem lies. I can't control everybody's life. I believe in limited government, okay? I am 100% pro-life. I think that abortion is a terrible thing. I think you you do complete you take one life and you and you ruin another life, okay? The life of the mother. But to to hold up the NDAA in an attempt to force taxpayers' dollars to be used for these efforts. That is really, really wrong. And this is what you referenced it. Senator Tuberville has been holding up. Yeah, he's been holding up promotions for the uh, for the Department of Defense. And the reason has been is because they've got this rule, this, this illegal rule that they passed, they ignored the statute, that they're using taxpayer dollars to, to fund these procedures. And it's wrong. I've gone over to the Senate floor to stand beside my friend. Senator Tuberville on several occasions as he's been holding these promotions up. And I will do so again until we can make sure that we get this straightened out. Well, good for you and several of your colleagues who have done that, have gone uh, over to the Senate chamber. But you know, who is really being the extreme here? We I played a clip from Hakeem Jeffries a little while ago saying there is not a single MAGA writer that we would support. They're all extreme. They're all horrible. Who is really being extreme here? I mean, we have members of Congress literally ready to burn down funding the military in order to support abortion. This is uh, talking about extreme. That is, is uh, that is going too far. The the uh, left, the Democrat left has gone way, way overboard. They see this under the Biden administration as their opportunity to push policies that they've been keeping undercover for quite some time, and they believe that this is their opportunity to push these forward. That is why, with even with our slim majority, as you well know, in the House, as we pass the NDAA, it's the first time that it was passed with all Republican votes ever, Jody. And that's because it was an, an incredibly great document. We removed taxpayer funding for abortions. 
We remove taxpayer funding for transgender surgeries. We remove taxpayer funding for battery operated uh, Jeeps. I mean, these are things that all they do is distract from the military's mission, which is to be the most effective and feared fighting force on earth. That is what they are supposed to be. And anything that's being funded that is not taking care of that mission is nothing more than a distraction. So we pulled all of those Absolutely. distractions out. Absolutely. All right, so you you mentioned uh, the House passed the, their version of the NDAA, I believe it was back in July. How do you see that now, or is it going to be? Is there any way for it to be reconciled with the Senate version? Well, I, I'm optimistic as we uh, have our new leader now, Mike Johnson. Uh, you spent a lot of time with Mike, as I have. Tony has spent a lot of time with Mike. They've worked together, for, I'm my understanding, for the last 30, 40 years. He did legal work for the uh, Alliance Defending Freedom and, and Religious Freedoms. And, and so what he's doing right now is crafting these uh, appropriation bills. We're bringing them forward, and we're trying to set up a scenario and utilize a strategy so at the end of this year, the Senate doesn't once again uh, jam the, the House of Representatives. Once again, the Senate doesn't pull the, uh, the uh, Lucy and, and pull the football away from Charlie Brown. And, and that's what we're trying to do is, is to get this because we've got good uh, appropriation bills. It's the first time in many years, and, and we should be able to tie in both the NDAA and, and some additional very, very important policy riders like our domestic energy production, like securing our southern border. Southern border doesn't need additional revenue, as you well know. What it needs is policies that get enacted. We saw them under President Trump. He enacted those policies. We know that they will work, and we should be able to do the same thing with the, uh, with the NDAA, which, by the way, Jody, will also help us improve our recruitment numbers which have been terrible over the last couple of years over the Biden administration because the military has been so focused on these distractions, as I referenced earlier. Absolutely. Well, listen, we've only got about a minute left, uh, Congressman Rosendale. As we go out here on this Veterans Day weekend, uh, let me give you the, the final word here to express your appreciation. Uh, you serve on the Veterans Affairs Committee. What would you say to our veterans on this weekend? I, it is an honor to serve the veterans uh, on the Veterans Affairs Committee. Uh, my dad was in the Marine Corps. He's, he's passed away now. My younger brother was in the Marine Corps, Dan Rosendale. He's in Centerville, Maryland. Very proud of the service he provided. And what I saw was the sacrifices that, that the family makes as well, Jody. So when I send out my Veterans Day, uh, thanks and wishes to everybody. I always make sure that we reference the families as well because they are part of that team. Right. They make the sacrifices as well. And we thank them too. Congressman Matt Rosendale from Montana, thank you as always for joining us on Washington Watch.